so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. This is Joy, and I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the new subscribers to this channel. It's my sincere hope that you are met with information that inspires you to continue to journey towards your prepared places. And to all the returning family members, welcome back. I truly do appreciate you all. I wanted to take some time today talking to you about one of the narcissist's demonic assignments. Like, listen, I'm fully convinced that they are in cahoots with the workers of iniquity. They're in cahoots with... <laughs> Hello, and thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I am Joy, and I am so glad that you press play. Listen, I wanted to talk to you today about one of the narcissist's demonic assignments. It's my firm belief that this is a spiritual attack, that you are under attack when you are in relation with one of these people. I believe that they are, you know, they are bound by demons. And so in essence, they themselves become Satan's minions and they do his work. Now, one thing that we experience as part of our journey in life is grief. It's a normal part of life. And it's normal for you to go through, you know, various emotions that are associated with grief. You know, we, we, we experience anger, a sense of loss, and we go into mourning, we cry, we weep, we, you know, we yell, we scream. We express ourselves in so many different ways. But one thing about narcissists is they want to be able to insert their power and control over you at all times and in all situations. Now, you may find that some narcs will handle this a little differently, but I'm coming from my experience and I'll share some scenarios or, you know, I'll share some things that I went through as I go further along. But with some of them, they will take your grief. They will take this, you know, painful experience and try to superimpose their beliefs or how they want you to, to express yourself in those moments. And this is not normal. This is not natural. And spiritually, it is illegal. You know, when God created mankind, he gave us part of our makeup as a soul that consists of your mind, your emotions, and your will. But the narcissist through the enemy will attack your mind. And then this will give them access to your emotions, right? And that will ultimately affect your will. So in the instance of grief, you'll find that they want you to suppress your grief. They'll speak negatively on you crying, um, you know, you don't have the freedom to fully express how you're feeling in that moment. And so that's not God's will. God gave us our feelings to be able to be in tune with where we are at any given point in time. That's why I don't like that expression, get out your feelings. No, my feelings are an indicator that something is not right. Or that something is right my feelings let me know a lot about where I am at any given time and you know place but these creatures they want to minimize your joyous occasions they don't want you to be able to be excited they want to instill feelings of fear anger sadness and even your grief they want to be able to manipulate that so that it can glorify the kingdom of darkness you know, when the narc starts to to badmouth you or to trash what you're feeling, a lot of the times, you know, it speaks to, you know, they'll start on that on our conscious level and it seeps into our subconscious. And this is where you'll find that suppressing your emotions can really become unhealthy for you. You know, in, in the creation, in the story of creation, God said that it was not good for man to be alone. A lot of times we take that that scripture or that part of scripture and we think about Adam and Eve. And, you know, without Adam and Eve, we wouldn't have the family structure. And so to me, in this instance, what it signifies is that we need each other. We need people to be able to go through the emotion, the, you know, the different phases and stages of life with. 
But this is where the narcissist comes along to pervert our process of experiencing life. Grief is a valley moment. Grief is where, you know, we, we, we are really vulnerable and we're open. And when you're vulnerable and open, you're availing yourself to influences. So when the narc is able to tap into your mind, they affect your emotions by telling you that, you know, you're weak for crying. Oh, shut up. You shouldn't be doing this. Or, you know, they were old. You didn't think they were going to live forever and saying things like that. And it can mess with people's emotions. You know, maybe it, may, it didn't affect you. Or maybe it wasn't that particular situation. I can think of two situations. I remember the morning my grandmother passed away. And I was just so torn. I was hurt. I was just devastated. And I was crying. And this creature came and said, okay, are you done? Can you go make breakfast now? And I'm like, wow. But what was so crazy is later on, he had left the laptop open. So I sat down. This is much later in the day. I sat down after he had continually throughout the day was like, are you going to be moping around all day? You know, saying, you know, saying real hurtful things. I didn't get a word of comfort at all from him. But he said these hurtful things throughout the day. And later on, you know, much later in the evening, I sat by the desk and I opened up the laptop and his Facebook was up. He had been talking to some girl about her grandmother's, you know, her grandmother's sickness, which was so ironic to me because I lost mine. But here he is comforting her about her grandmother's, I think, dialysis or whatever it was at the time. But I'm like, oh, and that really hurt me, you know. But that, that was one instance where I experienced grief and I was able to see that, you know, not only in my grief was there, was there no support? Hello, it's a narcissist. I didn't know that at the time. But, you know, now that I know, you can't expect support from them. They'll use these situations against you. And I know that this, you know, this creature left that there hoping that I would see it because we know that they're very sneaky. And that's just kind of how he wanted to do or, you know, me to experience triangulation, me to know that, listen, I'm out here comforting somebody else and I couldn't care less about you. Another instance where, you know, and this one was like, this one still, it still bothers me a lot um, because anytime he, a lot of the times when he tries to hover, this is his go-to game. I experienced a miscarriage and, you know, I pretty much went through that myself and when he, you know, and it, he was so dismissive about, you know, about the loss of the baby and couldn't care less, but it was hit, the way he would talk, the words that he would use to describe to me what was my child, to describe what this life was. It can really alter the way that you think about certain things, the way that not only you do you feel about yourself, but the way that you can even say, God, why did you let this happen? Why did this have to happen? You know, and that's one of their goals is to draw your focus away from God. That is their ultimate goal. And so one thing when it comes to dealing with grief with the narcissist, why they want to tap into your mind so that they can have control of your emotions is that they will take your will. And when I say they, the enemy will take your will, your God given will, your legal will, your right as a human. They will take that will of yours and hold you hostage. They'll hold you hostage and keep you in a state of grief. But you see, the problem with unexpressed grief is it keeps you stuck in a holding pattern. And some people stay in this pattern or in this cycle of pain for years and years and decades. It becomes five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And people around them are asking, why can't you get over this? What is going on? But you don't understand that the the messaging that is happening behind the scenes is what keeps the person stuck in this place. You know, it makes it difficult when you're in this holding pattern, which is a demonic assignment. It becomes difficult to live life. It becomes difficult to create a life. It becomes difficult to enjoy life. And a lot of the times you find that people can't express themselves freely because in their most vulnerable state, they are told to shut up. 
They're told that your feelings don't matter by somebody who, you know, matters to them. They just don't know that this person's a joke, but you know, it's our hope that they come into awareness or that you come into awareness of who the narcissist truly is. People become resistant to change when they've been in a holding pattern for so long. And so this is where you find that people's destinies, people's joy, people's dreams are robbed. And not only that, but then they start buying into the false belief. They buy into the false identity of the enemy that this is your portion and this is God's will for your life and your God is not good. Your God does not love you. Your God allowed this to happen to you. Now, you know, sometimes I've given you my situation where I lost my grandmother and I ex and I had a miscarriage. But now let's just take it to people who experience real traumatic loss, like instant loss, sudden loss, unexpected. If it was something that happened by murder. Think about those situations. Those are sudden and the narc won't allow you to grieve or the narc is dictating how you grieve, how you process that those emotions. It can alter a person's state of mind. It can alter how they begin to feel within themselves and how they feel about life itself and thus altering their perspective on not just life, but on God. And this is what the narcissist, that is their job. You see, and this is why I have to reject the notion that this is a mental disorder. It's not a mental disorder. It's not a, it's not a mental disorder to want to see somebody stuck in a place of, of torment. I, I can't get down with that. It's, I, I just refuse. I just refuse. I mean, I refuse, you know, when you when you harbor so much grief in your in your own life and you're and you're not able to to heal it brings in or it creates room for a lot of other like i mentioned earlier it creates room for other emotions to dwell within you that do not glorify god and you know some of these some of these end up taking you to a place of rebellion which according to scripture is a sin you know, and so it's that it's that altering, tarnishing your relationship with God, causing separation between you and your God is what their assignment is. And so if you are somebody that has experienced a loss that has been devastating to you, if at any time you did experience loss, and even if you are OK now, I'm glad that you are. If you are still, you know, processing the loss of the narcissist and, you know, this could be new for you and that's fine. I just encourage you to take a look at Psalm 31. I found this this passage of scripture to be very uplifting and encouraging. And so I just wanted to share this with you because it has been on my heart for a little while. I do hope that you find some value in this and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and take care of each other.